Yes, there is, I believe, evil in the world. How I would describe it um, is people's lack of identity in Christ and their belief in Jesus. And through that, as they're searching for something, um, the enemy's out there and attaches to them in various forms. It could be generational. It could be, you know, them searching other faiths or beliefs yeah. um, that are cult related, um, witchcraft related, you know, those types of things. And um, even, you know, something that some people would presume as being innocent, uh, playing with a Ouija board or playing those weird games when, you know, you're a youth. Those are all doorways to uh, attachments from the enemy. Okay. So, so you're talking about malevolent uh, personalities, demons. Yeah. And as we're trying to figure out how to uh, nurture ourselves or to find find meaning, we attach to these things, and then uh, and now we have uh, now we're partnering or pairing with evil stuff. It, yeah. Do you think it's possible to get a demon even if you don't know you're getting a demon? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I do too. I think, I think it happens all the time. Have you read any of John Mark Comer? Are you familiar with that author at all? Mm -mm. He's got a book called uh, "God Has a Name," and uh, one of his points, and I recommend him. He's he's an author up in uh, Portland, Oregon. Um, he's fairly popular right now, but um, he talks about how uh, uh, the scripture talks about the Elohim, like the lower level gods. Like there's these odd Old Testament passages talking about small letter G gods and how basically uh, every idol is it, uh, every idol that's worshiped is attached to a lower level Elohim, a demon, basically. Mm -hmm. Paul goes on to say later that uh, when we are worshiping idols, we're actually worshiping demons. We're, and worshiping doesn't just mean that you believe in them. It means that you're connected to them, whatever you worship, you connect to. And, and his thesis is that everybody uh, is attached to some kind of spirit and uh like you might just really be into the broncos but uh if whatever it is you know maybe the violence of sports or gambling or whatever the cheerleaders certainly um uh that's silly that sounds silly but um and no. so <laughs> it doesn't sound silly uh, maybe the dallas cowboy cheerleaders but not the bronco cheerleaders would be more. <laughs> um do you think that's true that everybody's every, you sort of just said it already do you think like we would pray for people we would always see something attached now did we just happen to find the right people who had this peculiar issue or do you think everybody actually does attach themselves to spirits uh, and then um and then when they come to jesus they have the, the opportunity to disconnect from what, whatever they already have um yeah i think everybody's got something attached to him at, in one way or another. I remember one of the deliverances that we did, it was all about uh, appearance. Um, this individual struggled with their appearance, appearance. And when they would look at, in the mirror at themselves, they would see ugly and fat and, you know, all of these different things. So, I mean, they could be something like that. And, and for that, individual they ended up with an eating disorder and it was very hard for them to see themselves as jesus sees them mm -hmm. um but yeah it could be that it could be lust it could be greed it could it's it there's so many different things out there you know it could be gluttony you you name oh. them the list goes on on and on so oh. yeah I wonder if the worship of success, which of course is a worldwide god or set of demons, um, it's definitely one of the gods of of, of American civic religion. Uh, the uh, the American dream uh, is about having, <laughs> and uh, having can not just be um, material items, but having a, a position or uh, being above other people, and. Um, and then when we feel beneath people, then we're we're completely uh, demoralized or uh, oppressed by this mm -hmm. worship of success. And it seems like we're either oppressing people or we're feeling oppressed. And there's spirits behind it. 
it is interesting to me that everybody we've prayed for, we see stuff attached. Mm -hmm. And that's just an oddity that maybe I would not have expected um, maybe going, going into this kind of thing. So, all right, that's the first question. So the second question is, um, and you sort of already answered it is if, if there is such thing as, as evil and there are uh, min min <laughs> malevolent spirits attaching to us, uh, what can we do about it? We can um, declare who we are in Jesus. Mm -hmm. I mean, we need to trust Jesus first. If you're not, if you're not someone that's ever trusted Jesus as their Lord and Savior and made Jesus the Lord of their life, first and foremost, that's the first thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Secondly, just by declaring who you belong to and rooting your identity in Jesus and not in this particular thing mm -hmm. um, like appearance or fame or money or whatever it is yeah. then that's when and you turn it over to jesus and um ask him to take it from you because there are people that struggle with releasing that and actually letting go that but jesus is there to help them so trusting yeah. jesus rooting your identity in jesus and asking him to break those ties mm. um those are the first steps in yeah. receiving that freedom. That's good. Yeah. It seems like as a kid uh, growing up and, and uh, I remember watching the exorcist. Uh, did you ever see that movie in the seventies? Yeah. And, uh, pretty creepy movie. I don't know how, I think I must've been 11 or 12 and I, I don't know how I was allowed to watch that movie. We, we were watching it at the uh, drive-in movie theater, which is funny. You think about cars driving by on the highway and seeing Linda Blair puking. Pea soup. Are you ready, Boots? Start walking. <laughs> 